just about to Waterloo, Iowa right now. And as you can see, look at the puddle there. Look at all that water standing. I am just about one hour, oh, let me get this closed. I'm just about one hour behind the one storm. And I'm about 12 hours behind the next storm coming. This is, let me see if I get my directions right here. My windscreen's fogging up here. I'm gonna have to open it a little bit. That's the direction I'm headed right now. And what I'm hoping for is to time it so that the storm splits right in front of me. Get a little bit of ventilation going there. I was going to leave out tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Today is Monday, the Monday Memorial Day, because this is the one chance to squeak in between two storms again, one in front of me and one behind me. And uh, so far it's working out pretty good. I'm wearing full rain gear anyway because it's cool enough that I'm not going to get overheated. Uh, About a quarter of the way home right now. Should make it another hour and a half to the Mississippi River. So we will see what happens. Let's see. Oh. Just about forgot to do the neck strap to my helmet. Nope, it's okay. Thought I missed the neck strap of my helmet. Yeah, a lot of people are getting outside of their cars and they don't realize how cold it is. One lady says, I wish I would have brought my coat. This has overall been a very much cooler than normal trip, even for May. High today is only going to be about 64. This is a pretty crowded place. Be out of here in a sec. Overall, the trip went very well, though. So everything's looking good. A little bit of road construction along the way, but that's to be expected, and none of it ended up really slowing me down that much. So that was good. back on the highway and 20 miles from Waterloo. Pretty much got to see and do everything I wanted to see and do on my vacation. When I get back home I'll have about two or three more days to catch up on some other stuff at home. Shut the camera off and talk to you guys in a little bit. About 60 miles west of Dubuque and it's raining now. I caught up to the storm but I'm running about an hour ahead of schedule anyway so I figured I might end up not splitting the storm but running into it. So far it's been it's been okay. Have the rain gear. Temperature's been pretty comfortable so Overall, still doing good. Got home Monday, about 5.30 in the afternoon. And if you saw my video previously, you'll see the only real difficulty I had with the bike it was very minor. That was, I still have these things on it, which I'm going to take off in a few minutes, but I ended up getting a replacement screw here. 
Got it from the Victory Kawasaki dealer at Fort Dodge. Absolutely free. How's that for a small-time dealership? You don't find that too much more. I was expecting to get hit with at least about six bucks for a little screw like that. So now it's just a matter of uh, taking the bands off so it looks a lot better and then putting it back on. Maybe with a little drop of blue Loctite so it doesn't come loose again. And the other thing I had to go through about of 350 miles of riding, I had to go through about 200 miles of some pretty decent rain. Not, not a gully washer, but medium type of rain. It was 65 degrees, so the temperature was manageable. All that ended up really getting wet was just my gloves. I wear online leather gloves so that I can have a little bit more feel of the controls and the handlebars. So um, that was very easy to do. I, I was concerned that at 65 degrees, though, and at 70 miles per hour, my hands would end up getting cold because of the wet gloves. But they didn't, so even that ended up being okay. I mean, they're just a cheap pair of gloves that I get in bulk. They're, they're nice quality gloves. They're goatskin gloves, but I buy them in bulk anyway, so the, the cost per each pair of gloves is not bad at all. So anyway, made it home. Everything's good, and then I'm going to start catching up on the videos. If you get a chance, um, check out Navy Thomas's video of the Pay Tea House. It's also called the Hotel Pay Tea, and it's the area in St. Joe. It's a, it's a luxury. It was a formerly luxury hotel in St. Joseph, Missouri. And actually of all the historical sites to see there, including the Jesse James House and the Pony Express Museum, I would say don't miss the Patey House. Make that your first stop if you only have limited time. And then come, come back later to see the Jesse James House, which is very tiny. It's about the size of this garage, actually. Not, if it's any bigger, it's only by a, a foot or two because it's very, very small. Four tiny rooms, basically, is what it is. But still, if you're a fan of Old West stuff and, uh, you know, the stories about the Wild West and Outlaws and stuff like that, it's it's pretty much a must-see. And there's there's sufficient things in there. No, none of these things cost. All of these museums are small-town museums, so the price is between $4 and $6. And then um, you get a dollar off for senior citizens, and I think some children are free and some children there's a discount. So it's not very costly at all. And the Patey House actually has so much stuff to see, and, and I will, in, in a future video, I'll put it together and edit it, but meanwhile, until I get mine up, check out Navy Thomas. He, he saw pretty much all the same stuff I did and posted a, a video uh, pretty much showing the whole thing, so I will get to that in the future. So that's about it for uh, this trip, and uh, I'll catch you guys later.